Hey everyone and welcome, it's Friday and we are here on lockdown cooking at home with myself Red Redfern behind the camera, behind there is my lovely wife Jane just checking on the right way up and everyone can hear me if you can give me a thumbs up or say yeah everything's fine that would be great we have had problems the last couple of times uh, with the camera but as long as all's good now just uh, put it in the comments underneath and then we can start cracking on Who's on, Jane? Uh, Rach, Rach Lingsby's on. Rach, can you see us? Are we all the right way up? <laughs> uh, Matty DeGarmo's watching. Hey, uh, Vicky Reynolds is watching. Uh, there's a couple more gone up, missed them. Uh, ooh. So it looks like we're right way. Nobody's telling us we're not. So I must be the right way around. That's good. That means I've sorted the camera out and we're all good to go. So today we're going to be doing a whole cauliflower cheese with some onion and bacon bits in it as well it's super easy to do it's really nice if I've got time as well I'm going to run through the Wardle salad uh, okay that we missed the other week and hopefully if I've got even more time I'll show you how to make mayonnaise and quickly right at the end a very very quick and easy mix for doing uh, Yorkshire puddings as well okay for the people in the States Yorkshire puddings are like these um, they raise up, up, okay, and you have it normally with the roast vegetables and uh, roast uh, any uh, meats as well with gravy. It's fantastic. Anyway, hopefully I'll show you that. Uh, I've got no wine to open today because I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but I didn't finish this bottle. I mean, look, I only had that much out of it. So I'm going to drink Impressive. the rest of it. This is the Monte de Cato that we had the other day, so I'll just pour myself a glass of that. We'll run through the ingredients and There's then quite a we'll lot of people up. on here. Sian's watching your dad's on. Hi John. Uh Waz is on. Uh, Axel Paps. Is that the same t-shirt red? Um yes, yes, but I'm very good and we've got some good weather, so I am getting it washed and out on the line. <laughs> Don't worry about him. I'm I'm looking after him, Axel. Okay, let's um, cheers everyone by the way. Hope you're staying safe. Uh, hope we're coming to the end of this lockdown shortly. I think God, we're on something like day 40, 40 or something. God, Lent was only that. <laughs> I know. I've given up everything for a lockdown. Anyway, let's run through the ingredients. Uh, we've got a nice big cauliflower here. We've got some cheese. Now, I've got ready grated cheese. If you want to grate your own, that's fine. Some bacon, onions, flour, salt, pepper, uh, some uh, butter here, milk, and the obligatory mixed herbs. Okay, I'm going to put this to one side. Hi Barb. Barb said, put your cake on the page, Barb. Barb made a lovely cake. Fishing. She sent me a picture. Fantastic. Don't be shy. Get it on lockdown. Okay then. So uh, we're going to prep the cauliflower up. And what we have to do with the cauliflower is you want to turn it over first. And all of the green stalks, okay, these want to take all of these off. And you want to be fairly careful that you don't cut too much into the cauliflower itself. Okay, now I, I like to leave just a couple right at the end, just for a bit of colour. Then with a small knife, okay, you want to then do a circle all the way around the stalk. Like so. And then the stalk will come out. Okay, so you're after just taking out the inner part of the stalk here, okay, like so. Ian Gibbons says that's a big collie, it's a Merca one, right? Yeah, it's a Merca collie. Hi Ian, it's, it's from Merca Donner. This must have cost me all of about a euro. Okay, and then we're gonna put it into a container. Now the container, okay, has to cover be higher than the uh, cauliflower itself. We are then gonna put into this a bit of salt Ian, I think Ian thinks we've got people staying with us because that's like enough for four again, isn't it? Yeah, we, it I is, promise you, Ian, we haven't. <laughs> I wish. And then uh, we want to put water all the way over it. Now, this is quite an important part, okay? You only want to go halfway up the cauliflower, okay? Not to the top, only halfway up. And then you want to put a lid on it, and then we're going to get that on to boil. Hopefully we won't run out of gas today. We're definitely not going to run out of gas today. What about that the other day then? We had problems with the camera, we had problems with the gas. It all went on the it other was, day. It was, all, it was all kicking off. Talk about live. 
Okay yeah. then, so the next thing to do then, we're going to get the uh, topping ready for the cauliflower whilst that's boiling up. The cauliflower, once it comes up to the boil, will only take five minutes. Okay, so whilst that's uh, up and running then, what we're going to do to this is we're going to have uh, about one and a half onions. Hi Wazza, she's saying hello. Hey Wazza. Uh, Emma's watching, Edward Gert. Hi darling, hello. Um, she loves collie. Yeah, so you'll this, probably like this, I guess. It's a lovely dish to do this This is, is just a... I mean, cauliflower is fairly straightforward. This, we just like a twist on it, because it just gets a bit boring, doesn't it? Uh, are Claire's watching? Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Claire. How did the camping go last night? Yeah, my daughter last night, love her. Got two young children in a first floor flat. Can't be easy. Uh, obviously, they're allowed out, but obviously running out of... Um, ideas so they had a staycation they built a tent in the lounge and they toasted marshmallows etc just to got all the camping gear got out all the camping the gear out just to keep the kids kids occupied okay then so we've got two onions there anita cox is watching anita, Hi, anita. How but you're you, dying to open, aren't you, Anita? Like us, Anita's got a hairdressing salon and called beauty house, salon called the House, house hairdressing, hairdressing on the coast here. Um, like like us, Anita's probably desperate to open. Yeah. Uh, Helen Gillett's in from West Yorkshire. Yay! Okay, so we're after dice. Remember, dice is when you go across first from top to t from the top to the tail. Then you turn it around and then you come across like so. Hi Sandra, Sandra's in from, Sandra do tell me, I always, are you cancel or asking, I always, I know it's pretty much the same but I always never, I can never wonder, Tracy uh, McGarry's in, hi sweetheart. Hey Tracy, how did those cocktails go Tracy? Hey. Looking forward to tomorrow when Jamie does his, don't forget tomorrow afternoon guys, it's Jamie's cocktails. Do you know, um, actually tomorrow, can we follow please and instead of just watching him and can we actually make a cocktail? Yeah sure. Right. Uh, we'll have a cocktail tomorrow. Yay, Mon Mona, see, look, we've got someone else in from West Yorkshire. Mona Lita Cairns is watching. Oh, Anita's scissors are getting rusty. <laughs> I feel your pain, Anita, I feel your pain. Okay, so one and a half onions. We're going to put this in, into a pan with a bit of olive oil. So I'll put the onions in first and I'll put the... the uh, Olive oil afterwards. Yeah, come come and see us, Marty. You're always welcome. Uh, Andrew Northcott, late on parade. Late What's on parade, that about? Andrew. What's the wine? Just remind him it's the Monte Duque. Can that you I believe it? Finished. Can you believe it? Andrew he didn't finish it, so he's finishing it off today because we're not on a wasteful thing now, are we anymore? We've got to use everything up. Yeah, yeah. Mona, Yorkshire, last us rule. I'm South Yorkshire, but that's fine. We won't hold it against each other, lovely. Okay, so. Uh, the onions are on the go. Into this then, we want to put in some bacon. About, roughly speaking, three or four rashes of bacon. Now I've got this from Mercadona. This is a cured smoked. Smells absolutely lovely. It depends how you like your bacon. This is a lovely cured smoked bacon. Mm. This seems quite good. It seems to be like less waste to me if when, we, when you buy it like that. I've never... Well, it not only is, to buy it in Mercadona like this, it's cheaper oh, because right, okay. it's not sliced. Because no one sliced it for you. Right. Gosh. Okay, Charging what? you for slicing these I days. <laughs> Amanda Ward's watching. Hey, Amanda. And then we'll have just some nice, fine bits. Sorry, guys. I'm camera wobble. I'm drinking coffee. I've been really good today, guys. I've been painting. I've had my, I've had my craft head on. So I've been painting and I shall show you my results when I'm confident enough that you won't laugh. <laughs> yeah, we're, <laughs> we're hoping to get outside very, very soon next week. Uh, I've put the menus up for next week. Um, they're all very simple to do, uh, especially uh, the salad type ones. Very easy to do, so don't be put off if you think they sound a bit posh or anything like that. As you know, everything I do is super simple. Okay, bacon bits then. Claire wants to know, can we do an Indian dish at some point? Kian's got a home learning pack and it's all about India. Yeah. And they could cook along. What could we make? What about, we were talking about it the other day, doing a biryani, weren't we? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do something uh, along the Indian lines. It'll be a week after next now. Week after next, Claire. Okay, so over the top of this then, we want to put some mixed herbs. 
Did you see that the other day, guys? You tried to set me on fire. I didn't try and set you on fire. <laughs> okay, and you want to put a lid over the top of this as well. He said... Uh, Anita Cox says, um, she always wants to know about cutting raw meat on the same board as other foods. What do right. you clean the board with? Okay, I just use uh, a, a cloth, a normal cloth like this. Okay, if you've got an, a, a, uh, any type of spray, if you've got an antibacterial spray, it's the best thing to use. Just give it a quick spray. Do it without, spray. try the ones without bleach though, Anita. Yeah, just give it a quick spray over the top of it like that, and that's fine. I mean, generally, the general rule of thumb, as far as raw meat on boards and all the rest of it is concerned is, it only comes into play, okay, afterwards. So at the moment, now I've, cut, I've chopped everything up and it's gone into pans and it's all cooking off, mm. okay? So regardless if it is cross-contaminated or anything, Everything I've done is all on the stoves and it's going to cook so we'll clean it off. Clean it right. Okay, it only comes a problem if you are now doing something that you're not going to cook off. Oh, right, okay. so if, say, say you were going to cook, eat a raw apple off that. Exactly, right, I'm well, with I've, you. I've cleaned it now anyway. So yeah, matter, course. But, but, of course. Um, but generally speaking, <clears throat> just because you do a chicken on here and then you do an onion afterwards or whatever, if it's all going either in the cooking. oven or you're cooking it, it really doesn't matter. It's only when you come to doing something that you're going to eat straight away from the board you've cut. Right. Okay. Let's have a quick drink then whilst we're at it. I'm still on a dry week, guys. How, go on, I'll have a big whoop for that, please. That's good for me. That's very good for you. Right then. As I've also see, I've also yeah, had a no one. sweet week as well. I've had a no sweet week, and uh, anyone knows me really well will know that I've never been addicted to anything other than Harry Bow. So you'll know that I've been really really good. So I'm going to have a cheat day on Sunday. Now in the, another thing which I've uh, I'll show you. Look, if you, if you can see here, I put my spoons into some warm water. Okay, these are my tasting spoons. Okay, if you put those onto the side when you're doing all this. That means every time you pull one of these out, you put it back in here, it's nice and clean, ready to go. So what we're after on this is, we're after browning all these off. And all this is, is onions and bits of bacon, salt, pepper and some mixed herbs. Okay. Oh, someone just said, woohoo, I don't know how you manage. Who said that to me then? I missed a hair, I missed that. Thanks, everyone's going, woohoo. I'm missing it. all these. I'm uh, <laughs> Helen Gillett. What do you mean? She said, "Are you ill?" <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be if I don't start soon. I think I had a bit of a detox last night. I, just, I had the shakes, but I literally, honestly, think that's through lack of sugar. You know, it's not so good, really. Is it? What we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to make a white sauce. Now, remember, I showed you the other day how to make a roux. So this is what we're going to do now: is we're going to make a roux, and we want to have about a quarter. Of a pack of butter. Haven't we? Ian says we've had a sunny, not a dry. Yeah, whatever, Ian. Yeah, I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. Um, we've had some gorgeous weather actually, and we're in for some more. Thank God. I and mean, this lockdown's horrible, but when it's sunny, it makes it a little bit Just more, a little, bit, a little bearable. bit bearable. You know, at least we can get out in the garden and. Okay, and once the the butter's melted. Now remember I said that if you're going to use a whisk when you're making white sauce, you have to use a pan that's not metal, okay? Because oh, yeah. if you use metal on metal, it turns it grey. Is that a tip top top tip? Well it's not, I did it last time so it can't be another tip top tip top. Well can it I? can to anyone that wasn't watching. Yeah. So normally you start off with uh, a wooden spoon and then you'll, it's easier and quicker to go on. So what we're after doing here is just melting the butter in the bottom. I get too close because it's quite hot. <clears throat> I'm just watching you, but it's quite hot over there. You can see the cauliflowers bubbling. So what what we're after doing actually with the cauliflower here is I can see it's all bubbling around the bottom. What we're after doing is cooking the stalk. Okay, cooking the stalk through the flower part, the florets at the top. We're after steaming those through. Mm. Okay, so the whole of it's cooked. Without being soggy. Without being soggy, okay? Yeah, Barb, the weather's good. If we, and nothing, we might come out of this with a decent tan. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add, roughly speaking, three tablespoons of flour to the mix. 
just to the butter. Now as you can see it's still very soft. I need a little bit more flour in that because that's not what I'm after really. Oh, as if Claire Bounce has got a leg of lamb, what's that about? Okay, so we need a little bit more. Do you want some of my rosemary Claire? <laughs> So this is the consistency we're after now to make a really nice roux. So it moves, okay, and it's not into a thick ball, it still moves quite a lot, okay. So now we're going to start adding the milk to it. I have been saying hello to Wazza. I mean he's my top fan, especially after his crisp sandwich. I'm okay. going to get him to do a guest spot. So to this then we're going to add a little bit of milk. He says without dropping it all over the place. Look at the state of that. And eat a Cox McMillan says, where'd you get your knives from? Now you're going to surprise her here, aren't you? And tell her I'll where tell did you get your really good knife from? Right, this, let me, let me just take that off here. This one here, Anita, right, I bought from Open Core in Alveria when I was working at Fluid. So wow, this, there you are. So this now is probably seven years old yeah, now. I would say so. Okay, and it costs me, it, this cost me about 12, 12 euros. Okay, and it was in open call. And I, I looked at it and I bought it because it's, it's got a very hard, um, it's got a very hard blade, uh, but it's also a very fine blade. Now, you can get, there's all sorts of French ones. I mean, I've got some Victorian Ox Sabatier is probably the ones that look like this, but I don't like Sabatiers because the blades tend to be quite thick. Right. So, uh, as you can see, it's cur it's quite curved now from where I've been um, from where I've been uh, sharpening it. But it's a really good knife. Red has two really good knives. Where's the tiny knife, Red? We, uh, Red has two really one. good knives, and let me tell you now, if you want to naff him off, lose his knife when you're washing up. Both of them. Because so you keep adding then to this the milk a bit at a time because what you're after doing is cooking this flour out each time. I'm trying to come over here because yeah. I know but it's quite hot That's there. That's it. Okay. So you cook all the flour out each time until it comes back into a ball, like so. Add a bit more milk. Hi Drew, Drew Kitchens. Hi Drew. How's things down your way? Is that plain flour? Just plain flour, Yep. butter, and then you add your milk bit by bit. Wow, Sally Davis says that they've still got some knives that John Redfern, that'd be Red's dad, gave them as a wedding present. Wow. Gosh. Well, I've still got this, see this knife here? This knife here, if you can just see here, look. See if it Let got my initials on it. Let me just get the right angle Can for you this. See? Uh, yeah, there, see there? stay there. Oh yeah. Okay, right. This, R -A -R. this is a this is a Victorian ox. Now, my parents bought me this when I joined the army in 1980. It was a set, and this, believe it or not, used to be a serrated edge red knife. No way. Yeah. Who that's, knew? <laughs> and that's how much I've sharpened it. Is now it's just a normal knife. Gosh. Oh, you I'm need so to drink. Apparently, we've got lots of I'm people telling sorry, you to drink. Yes. What am I, I'm, I'm oh, doing... Lorraine and Terry are watching. Blyden. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, how are you, Terry? Terry how nice are to you? see you on here. Terry's not been very well, peeps. So, uh, give your mix, give your uh, topping mix uh, a bit of a stir. We want that nice and crispy. Okay. Put the lid back on. Back onto the roux and the white sauce, as you can see, look, keep on mixing it, keep bringing it back. This will get your muscles going. Nicola Neves watching, hi, hi Nick. Nicola. Got quite a few watching today, I've missed some people. To be you honest. can of course buy the white sauce, okay, but this is far cheaper, nicer, okay, to do it like this. Watch the video back. Anita's saying she'd make a pig's ear out of that. I, watch the video back. Just watch it a little bit slower. And I have to say, Anita, I'm not very good at sauces. To Even be fair. when it look, it look, look how lumpy it looks like that. Okay, if it looks like that, don't fret. Mm. Okay, just keep it on the heat. Keep it moving. Okay, just keep it moving. And what happens is, 
the flour starts absorbing the milk, it starts cooking out, okay, and it all starts coming back again. I like a good cheese sauce. So once it gets to like that, I then change over to a whisk. And you're after it to become nice and smooth. See how, it, see how it's smooth now and all the lumps have come out of it? Nice. Keep adding the milk a little bit at a time. And there's roughly about half a litre of milk going to go into this. Each time it's really important to make sure you cook it at what's called cook it out, which means you're bringing it back up to the boil. We've got a few people in from Canada actually. A Debbie's in and a girl called Kerry Lothian's in. Um, I think she said she was from Canada also. We've got a few people in from, and obviously a few uh, people from all over the world actually. Okay, a little bit more milk. Shout out where you're from, guys. I yeah, hope, I'll try and say hello to everybody, most people, but sometimes when I'm concentrating on stuff, I, I sort of miss it. Okay, so this is a consistency we're after now. Okay, nice, free running, but see how it's holding. Turn that down. What we're going to do now, instead of turning it off, not down. Just going to test it now because I've got, forget, I've got no salt or anything into it. And what you're after is when you taste it, not only you're you looking for how much salt to put in, I've put about half a teaspoon of salt into that. You're after tasting the flour in it. Okay, if it tastes smooth and creamy, perfect. If you can taste the flour in it, it means the flour is not cooked out, so it needs, it needs to have some more cooking. And that means it will go a little bit thicker. Lovely. That's, see how it's bubbling now? That's perfect now, so we can take that off. that on the side. Go back to the topping. Look at that. Okay we're after it nice and crispy, nice and brown. It smells lovely that does. So we'll just leave that like that there. Now, I've just turned off the cauliflower. I've got a thing here called a spider, okay, which I'm going to take this out with. If you haven't got one of these, okay, then you can use two, uh, two fish slices. Why, you have to keep in the water? No, you've got to, you've got to get it out whole. Right. Okay, two fish slices. <gasps> oh, where's your dish? Is that going in your dish? Yeah. On earth did you put the dish over this side? Because uh, I, I was going to do something else. Now a little bit's fallen off the side. If a little bit does fall off, like it has done with mine, don't stress about it. Just take it out and bonk it back in. Like so. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then with this, the very top bit here and a knife, you want to cut off, okay, the very top. Okay, just put that down the side here. So you're after it being flat, yeah? Yeah, we're after a flat bit here because what we're going to do now is we're going to, we want 
This mix to go on here without falling off. Right. You want it on the top. Right, okay. Okay. So into your um, white sauce, we're going to put a bit of cheese. Now I've got some ready grated cheese here. Obviously, if you've got a block of cheese, you use a block of cheese. So a handful of the cheese goes in there. Give it a good mix. Made me a little bit nervous as well. Carry when you carried that across the room then like that. I thought, oh dear me, this could end in a disaster. He of little faith. I know, right? Oh well, after the other fiasco the other day, I'll, you know, let's leave nothing to chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first thing then is a little bit of the sauce just on the top here, like this. Okay. And then the topping. Onto the top. And then some cheese. Don't be shy of your cheese, guys. Okay. Then a little bit more. They're really good, those bags of cheese, aren't they? They're not very expensive, are no, they, in America, America, No, no like... really cheap and really much more convenient, really, for especially for cooking. And then one more lot on the top. Okay. How soon can you get here, Ian, Jackie? <laughs> and then some more cheese. Okay. And then the cheese sauce all the way around. Does that soak it up quite a lot, the cauliflower? Because that looks like an awful lot of cheese to, sauce to me. But does it soak up a bit? Well, you, you, to be honest, you need to have a lot of cheese. I mean, isn't that half the point of having cauliflower cheese, to have a lot of cheese yeah, sauce? Yeah, yeah, it just, just looks a lot. That's all. So all that then, and then the last bit... Cheese all the way over the top. Like so. Okay, so that's nearly ready for the oven. Just before it goes into the oven, oven we're going to sprinkle it with some mixed herbs. Like so. Those have run out, I've got some more, he says, there's the bronze salad. As you probably noticed, I use an awful lot of mixed herbs here. Okay, a good sprinkle of mixed herbs on the top, and we'll get that straight in the oven. Now what we're just after with that is, we're just after browning it off. Because everything in there is already cooked. So we're just after browning it off. So quick clean down. Over here. And then what I'm going to show you now is to do the uh, mix for a Yorkshire pudding. Are you doing that now, are you? Let's quickly do the Yorkshire pudding mix. So... It's very easy. The Yorkshire pudding mix, how much is in there? That's enough. It is three eggs. It's basically three eggs to half a pint of milk, okay? So either half a litre or half a pint of milk. So three eggs into a bowl. A half a litre is not half a pint, is it? No. Well, it's not far off, okay? Okay. It's, it's actually 200 and... You want half a pint of milk or 200 millilitres. Okay. Just under. Okay. So three eggs. This is for a Yorkshire pudding mix, this guy. So yeah. uh, uh, K Appleby Curtis asked for this. Uh, half a teaspoon of salt. So you, if you're missing this, you can watch this back and make your batter mix. Okay. Don't use cracked black pepper. Just use ground white or black pepper. A little sprinkle. Okay, to this then, we're going to put in 
Hi, Amy. Amy Adams is watching. Hi, Amy. Three. Three there, uh, go on. On. No, go on, carry on. Three tablespoons of plain flour. Now it is important with the flour to only use plain flour. Not self-raising, just plain. Okay? So one, two. You didn't um three. didn't cook the cauliflower for long, Tracy. Ten minutes in some hot water. Not long at all. Don't forget you can don't, don't forget you can watch it back. And Helen's right, Debbie, there is bacon in this, but you don't have to put Obviously, bacon. No, for if, vegetarians, for you, vegetarians you just do the onions. Yeah, Could just you? do the onions and the olive oil. Okay, yeah. now I like to give this a mix first. Okay, just with the eggs before we start putting in the milk. Now, so, when you've made this, mm -hmm. can we put it in the fridge and use it Sunday? Correct. I actually need one more tablespoon, so it's four tablespoons of flour. That's better. Okay, once you get it to this stage then, a little bit like the um, white sauce, I add my milk a little at a time because I want to make sure that there's no lumps in the flour and it's all combined. Lovely to see you on here. Just a little bit more. Now, if anybody uses milk. this mix, if you want to watch the video back, if you do use Red's mix, let's see your results, please. So, what you're after doing now is you're after getting a lot of the some air into it now. a little bit too weak that is I need to put a little bit more flour in and I'll show you how to check for the consistency in a minute so I suppose you can always add the flour to it yeah but you can't take it away correct well you can take it away but you'd but have you'd to add, add, more. add more milk wouldn't you whenever you make a Yorkshire pudding batter you have to let it stand for at least half an hour Okay, so you let it stand in the fridge for about half an hour. So what we're after now for this is with a spoon, okay, you're after coating the back of a spoon so that you can draw a line through it on the back, okay? Do it again. and it holds the line, okay? So we'll get that into a container. So you can, so you can put this in a container and you can leave it till sun, you could yeah. leave it in, until you wanted to, how long would it last until you wanted to make Yorkshire, say? This, this will last you four or five days easily. Okay. Okay, obviously when you take it out, before you put it into the mix, into the, your, uh, containers you have to give it a mix now with your Yorkshire um, your Yorkshire pudding uh, tray Trains. that you're going to use it's really important you have to put probably a quarter of an inch of oil into the, the bottom of the tray and it has to be roasting stick your oven up as high as it will go and you want it smoking like holy hell right before you put your mix in because what you're after doing is get it to rise as quickly as possible, okay, and once it's risen, you then turn your oven down, okay, to dry it out. But you want it to rise as quickly as possible, because if you don't let it, if you let it rise bit by bit, it ends up cooking at the level, okay, and not rising all the way up. And you end up like a sponge thing, don't you? end up like a spongy thing. I've done that a few times. Yeah, we've all done that. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's on that one. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is the other day uh, we didn't have a Wardle salad, okay, because um, of what happened with our lovely little dog. We lost him and uh, I just wasn't up for it and that was a salad day. So I'm just going to do a Wardle salad. Now, Wardle salad is one of the easiest of the salads to just do. Just answer Debbie's question, how long... What's the temperature and for how long Yorkshire puddings? Okay, the temperature to start with is you want your oven up as high as it will go before you put it in. Once, they, once you put it in, you keep it as high as it is for only five minutes or so until it rises, ten minutes, and then drop it right back down to, if you've got an oven that goes from uh, up to 300, you want 150, something like that, okay, because you're after drying them out once they're in, all right? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to make up mayonnaise. Oh, okay. Make your own. Gosh, it's a complicated day today. But mayonnaise is so easy. Okay. So easy. Okay. We're after one egg yolk. So to get an egg yolk, then all you're doing is passing an egg from one to another, so all the white goes. Okay. Like so. You can put it in your hand if you want to. So one egg yolk into there. We're then going to put into that a little bit of salt. Just a splash. Like so. A little bit of pepper. Like so. And then we're going to give that a good mix. Now mayonnaise it's a really easy dish, all it is is olive oil and egg yolks. Now, does anybody know where mayonnaise comes from? Where it originated from? Anybody want has it a guess in the comments? I have to give them a chance. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a drink. Louise Thornton's watching. <laughs> Anita Cox said that's not easy already with the eggs. You have to have <laughs> practice, um, Anita. Okay, well, may mayonnaise comes from Menorca from Mahon, the capital of Menorca, hence May Heart Nays. Yeah. There you go. See, every Mahon. day. Every day's a learning day. So to the egg yolk then we're gonna add olive oil. And you again you wanna put a little bit at a time. Yeah, your dad got it right. Mona, you got it wrong. Pauline Ring got it right. See, I didn't marry you because you were a chef, but enough, I've come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I think. <laughs> I think I, um, it's Margarita Jones's birthday today. Margarita, if you're watching, honey, happy birthday. Jan Jeffries is just. We'll forgive you, Jan, as you do some super menus. We'll yes. forgive you. Just catch up later. I could do with having a, a bowl that's round, really. Oh, who's the chef? I know, right? Now, Jamie, that's um, our Jamie, who is our um, cocktail guy, who um, you'll see him on a Friday. Uh, Nikki, his wife, who holds the camera for him on a Saturday, she's actually a beautician. She's my beautician. She's amazing. So she's got a little thing going. Her name's Nikki Myers, and you could, if you can hook up with her on Facebook, she does a little live show on a Thursday afternoon, I think, about your skin and what you can do while you can't get to. Um, bar etc and it's really informative for anybody that's got dry skin you know if you want to make an exfoliator Nikki's your girl she, she comes live on a Thursday she's got quite a few followers and she'll talk and you can ask her any questions 
I don't know why this isn't coming together. Oh, no. I know, right? I might have to put a block of ice, a little bit of ice into it to bring it back. What's the matter with it? I don't know. Could Will be you... a bad egg. Uh, Pete Rogers is watching. Hi, Peter. And Lindsay Booten's watching. Hi, Lindsay. Oh, hi, Lindsay. Say hello to Dave. I'll tell you what. I'm going to start that again. Are you? Yeah. See you watching this, Anita. See what happened there. See, this is live. You see, doesn't he's not happy with that? Well, um, my Elsie laid that egg. There should be nothing wrong with that I know, egg. It's, it's not coming together, so. What's your. Uh, so we've been in this one. No, you're going to keep that I, there. You want to see the difference? No, I can add that to this. Oh, okay. So he's starting again on his um, mayonnaise because he's not happy with it. Because it's not doing what it's meant it's to be doing. It's not doing what it's meant to be doing. So there you are, guys. Not always is it perfect. Maybe it's because it wasn't uh, a round bowl, I don't know. Is that looking like it should be? Yeah, it's starting to come together now. Oh, uh, I see. Oh, yeah, I can see the difference actually. Thomas McMillan's watching. Thomas does some lovely quotes. He does some lovely quotes on Facebook. He's got a lovely um, Thomas McMillan quotes on Facebook. Some really nice sayings. And to be honest, never more than now yeah, do, do we, we need, need some inspiration. And Thomas's stuff's really inspirational. I will going to see if I can use this fucking <gasps> here. Then. Oh, no. That's starting to look a bit like mayonnaise, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's starting, it's starting to come together. And yeah. I don't know why. Where's my cloth? I don't know why the other one didn't. Sometimes the egg's not right, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Put this, uh, stop it moving too much. If, if your bowl's moving about all over the place, just stick it on a wet cloth. You can use a mixer for this, obviously. So really dumb question. Yeah. Why is mayonnaise in the shop white then? White. Well, this will go white. The more oh, okay. the more oil you put into it, the right. whiter it comes. But don't forget, we're using our own home laid eggs anyway. Yeah, so they're so, quite yellow anyway. So they're aren't quite they? yellow anyway. We've got a chuck. Uh, our little silky, we've got two silky uh, chickens. They're really super cute. They're sit one of them sitting at the moment, which is quite nice. So that would be lovely if we got some little chicks from that. Okay, let's see, this is what I wanted, like this. All right, okay. Do I use in that oil then? Uh, only because I wanted it to uh, come together a bit quicker and right. not bother the oil Okay. Right, we're only going to make up a little bit because I'm just going to show you how to do the mayonnaise. So once you get it nice and thick like that, you then break it back down again by putting some vinegar in it. So when you put the vinegar, whenever you're pouring vinegar or colorants or, or um, essences, you always pour it into a cap first before you put it into something else. Otherwise, you'll put too much in. So we're just going to put one cap into it and give that a mix. And this then 
we'll break it back down again. And it, as you can see, it starts making it go white. Now what you don't want it to be too uh, vinegary. So we'll give it a quick taste. A little bit more. Only half this time. Okay, so that's enough. Of it. Lovely. So we're going to put that to one side, and we're going to put, get everything together then for the uh, Wardle salad. Now, normally Wardle salad is probably one of the most simple. There's all sorts of uh, theories about who made it first, but the, the general consensus is it came from New York. All right, and who, who started it, we're not quite sure. It depends on what you're reading on uh, Google to who started it. But it's basically um, crisp lettuce, wal uh, walnuts, red apple, and white grapes. Now, I haven't got any white grapes. So we're going to have to improvise, he says. Uh, and all we're going to do is make up a very simple Wardle salad. So I want a few bits of lettuce. Could you, Dad, your dad said you could use lemon juice. What would yeah, that... you could, instead of vinegar, you can use lemon juice. In, in your mayonnaise? Any, anything acidic right, works okay. fine. Okay. okay, so we're going to have some slices like so. Okay, pop them in there. Now we want to put in some slices of red apple. Now remember with, a, with an apple I showed you how to do it to get the core out. Cut it in half and then angle your um, knife down one side, okay, so it comes away. Go flat and then straight down again. So then you've got the core out of the way. Do the same with that side. It's a really simple, easy way of doing your apple. Okay. Yeah, apparently it came up from the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, New York. That would make sense. Yeah, but it, it depends, like I said, it depends on uh, what you read to who actually designed it. I don't think there's any question that it came from New York, but uh, which hotel first did it and which chef first did it, we're not quite sure, or I'm not quite sure. Okay, so the apple goes into there. No celery in this? Yes, some celery goes into it. You've got celery? I think I've got a little bit of celery. Yes, celery goes into it. Forgot uh, about that. Barb's Sorry. prompting me there. That's Thank you, Barb. I've got any celery left. I don't know if we have. I think I might have binned it, didn't I? We used it, I think. No, yeah, celery normally goes into it. Sorry, but I haven't got any. And where is a container? Let's This looks healthy, right? Generous I'm, portion of. I'm not keen on walnuts, but actually, walnuts. I do. I like them in um, salad. I also like them on a walnut whip. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the mayonnaise and the mix, I like to use half mayonnaise and half yogurt. Mix these two together. My Greek yogurt, that mm. lovely. Give that a good mix. Now you can keep that in, if you can yeah. keep this in the fridge. Keep this in the fridge, no problem at all. Okay, and then all you do is you add the yogurt and mayonnaise dressing to the ingredients you've got there. Give it a good mix. Don't forget this would normally have um, a bit celery of celery in it and a bit of, and some grapes as well. Yeah, we weren't really going to do this today. This but is just an extra because I didn't do it the other day. because you didn't do it the other day. So we're not really prepared to do this, to be fair. Once it's all mixed then, we're going to put it into a form here. Are 
We use the forms a lot, don't we? I do. Oh, you yeah. do, so you, you do, not me, clearly. Bit of extra sauce over, over the top. And then a little bit of colour with some chopped chives. Okay, over the top. Mm. And there you have a very easy, simple, healthy, healthy not too bad, well, yeah. warm salad. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about the mayonnaise splitting off first go. I have no idea why that was. Well, it just shows, doesn't it? Not everything always goes to plan. So we're now going to look at. Uh, where are you? And the cauliflower cheese is now ready. Here's one I made earlier. Ta da! Holy crap. That looks good. So let's get a plate. Mm. Obviously, you can serve this with. We're going to be eating this for a week. It's huge. Obviously, you can serve this with uh, meat if you wanted to, or some vegetables, or anything like that. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look at it then. Be careful, guys, because this is hot. I like the crisp, the sound that because it sounds nice and crispy, like the cheese is quite crunchy. Well, that's what you're after. You're after it nice and crispy. Mm, look at that, guys. <clears throat> you got a wowee off moon, huh? Yeah. Mm, wow, we. This is such a nice dish to do, guys. Really is. And then you want a sprinkle of let's bring that over here then. On this side with this one. So there you go. Okay, you've got a whole cauliflower cheese and a very simple Waldorf salad on the side there with a yoghurt mayonnaise dressing and your batter mix in there. I'd like to see how that comes out guys, put some pictures on, but uh, this cauliflower cheese, you will really, really enjoy this. It is so nice, honestly. Very easy to do, the kids will love it as well. If you're a vegetarian, obviously, take out the bacon bits. So that's it now for us here at Lockdown Cooking at Home with Red Redfern and my wife behind the camera, Jane. Tomorrow, don't forget, same time, Jamie's doing his cocktails, okay? Uh, the list of the cocktails is an announcement, so get your ingredients ready. We're going to try it to, uh, this time, aren't we? We'll have a go. Yeah, on. we're going to have a go. Looking forward to that. Uh, mon uh, the menus for next week's up there as well, an announcement. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. Anybody need any help with anything, just uh, contact myself in comments. Uh, Moni, yeah. Moni wants a hollandaise sauce. Yeah, we, we're doing hollandaise next week on Wednesday, I think. Is, Is it, it when? I don't know. I'll, I'll put it in the menus for next week. We're going to do hollandaise sauce. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you'll need a glass bowl and uh, egg yolks, some warm water and uh, clarified butter but I'll show you how to do that anyway okay. so uh, yeah we'll do a hollandaise sauce now hollandaise sauce is one of the basis of a lot of sauces you've got a uh, Bernays sauce that goes that you add to hollandaise to make it into you add tarragon to it you've got a Chiron sauce which you add tomato puree to it but it all comes from hollandaise sauce uh, it's a lovely light lovely really nice uh, light sauce to do anyway that's it from us thanks very much guys Thank you, watching. everyone. If you're watching this on YouTube, underneath uh, this video, there's a thumb like this. Please uh, go and click that to like it. If you've not already subscribed, get over there and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so cause when we go move forward after the lockdown, we'll be doing most of it on YouTube rather than Facebook, I think. Okay. Anyway, cheers, everyone. Stay safe out there, and I look forward to seeing you all on Monday. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye for now. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. Bye.